this video we're going to cover encapsulation. The final OOP concept that we have to cover. So we've covered three of the four. Well, we're about to cover the fourth one, but we've already covered inheritance. We've covered polymorphism. We've already covered abstraction. And we're soon to be covering encapsulation. So I'm gonna check it because we are covering it. So we're done with the four core OOP concepts. We're gonna focus on encapsulation today because that's the final concept we have to talk about. So like always, I like to start with the definition. Pretty long definition. So encapsulation, this is the first part of the definition. I just want to break it apart. But the first part of encapsulation is just the idea in OOP where an instance variable is sugarcoated or encapsulated. Because the instance variable is encapsulated, we will not be able to just simply access it by printing the instance variable. So instead, what we have to do is we have to create an object and use getters and setters to access the instance variable we defined. So that's the next part of the definition. So the first part is the idea in OOP where an instance variable is sugarcoated or encapsulated. By these two words, I mean it's private root restricted access. So that means you define it through the modifier access, modifier private, the access modifier private. Um, in AP, all instance variables, by the way, an instance variable is just a variable you create when, when you make a class. So it's like the first couple of lines after you make a class. So those are your instance variables. And those are, in AP, they're always declared as private. That's how College Board likes to teach it for the exam. So those are always gonna be private. For competitive programming or anything like that, they can be private, they can be really anything, but it's best to just keep it as under private. Okay, so. Okay, so encapsulation. The idea in OOP where an instance variable is sugarcoated or encapsulated when it, when it is encapsulated. It will then be accessed and changed. I should say that.
So, let's reread that definition. The idea in OOP where an instance variable is sugarcoated or encapsulated. It will then be accessed and changed through an object using getters, accessors, and mutuators. I should make these setters and then mutuators. So, encapsulation. The idea in OOP where an instance variable is sugarcoated or encapsulated. We got that part down, right? The second part is that we access and change the instance variable through an object using getters and setters, because since it's declared a private restricted access, we'll not be able to just straightforward change it like we normally would. Instead, we have to use getters and setters to do so. So, by the way, these are just accessors and mutuators are just synonyms for getters and setters. I just put that there for those of you in AP. You will hear College Board say these two, but you'll hear everyone else, every other, every single other coder will call it these two. All the teachers, all the students will call it these two, while College Board will just call it these two. College Board just tries to find a way to be unique, so they call it these two. But I feel like it's better if you know both, because the AP exam could either show one. The AP exam is definitely going to show accessors and mutuators, so it's good if you know the synonyms of getters and setters. But I'm going to be calling them getters and setters. I just put them th there in case it appears on the exam this year or any other year. I haven't seen, I don't, I don't remember if accessors or mutuators appear on the exam. I don't know if it's getters or setters. I have to take a look and come back there. But I'm pretty sure that College Board calls it those two on the exam. It's rather than getters and setters. So, getters and setters. What are they? There, okay. So, two more words we have to define. So, we have getters and we have setters. Getters are just another word for accessors. And you're going to see why they're called get and why they're, why they're called getters or why they're called accessors. Because the... The getter is a method. Getters are just methods. That get or access a value of an instance variable. Does that kind of ring some bells? That's why they're called getters and setters, right? Because they're just simply methods that get or access. Access is accessors, get is getters. So if you see it on the exam called accessors, just remember that it's just a getter because it just accesses the value of an instance. Oops, typo. Not typo, but righto, I guess you can say. You know what I mean. There you go. So getters, methods that get or access a value of an instance variable. So straightforward, simple, right? It's in the word itself get methods that get or access a value of an instance variable straightforward simple enough then we have setters and setters are exactly what you think they are There you go. So that one is also straightforward enough because the words are in, because you, you can see it makes sense, right? You get the gist because the set and the mutuate are part of the name itself, right? Mutuators mutuate the value, setters set the value. Set and mutuate are just synonyms and these two mean the same thing. You're just gonna hear College Board call it these and you're gonna hear everyone else call it setters. Um, I can assure you that no one calls them accessors and mutuators besides College Board. Other than that, everyone else is going to call it getters and setters. So it's important you know what either of those are, and they're just synonyms. And once you practice, you start to understand that these are just the same thing, and they're nothing different. They're just the same. So are we good to go?
Those are our definitions. Pretty much covered. Getters, getter access a value of an instance variable. Methods, setters, set or mutuate a value of an instance variable. By the way, mutuate just means to change. So it really just changes the value of an instance variable. Or get just retrieves it. So there's like a bunch of synonyms for get. You kind of get the gist. I just said get and access because those are kind of um, the root words of their main method and what they do. So if, if you know what getters do, and if you know that getters get a value of an instance variable, it's just easy to keep that on the top of your head because getters means to get a value and setters mean to set a value. And I'm gonna put their synonyms in parentheses. This is just another word for accessors. And this is just another word for mutuators. There we go. We've covered three definitions. Let's recap them. I've repeated them so many times. I just feel like it's useful. I, I don't remember if, how many times I'm gonna see, how, how many times you're gonna see an encapsulation question on the AP exam. But in case it is there, it's always good to be prepared. So we have encapsulation. The idea of OOP or an instance variable is defined in, in a class. Well, that's just the definition of an instance variable, right? It's defined in the class. The instance variable is sugarcoated or encapsulated. This means that it's given private restricted access. Because it is given private restricted access, we can't just straightforward print it to the terminal, right? We have to access it through an object using getters, which are another word for accessors, and setters, which are another word for mutuators. Then we have getters and setters. Getters get and or access a value of an instance variable. Setters set or mutuate a value of an instance variable. And getters and setters are just methods, by the way. I don't want to like confuse you or anything. They're just methods that get and set values. So we've covered our definitions. Kind of wanted to emphasize that quite a bit because you can't really go into the code unless you know what the words mean, right? Straight and simple. Let's give an example. Let's do a getter and setter. So we have a class, right? Always, we need a class. Right, we had a class. After we have our class, the next thing we need to do are instance variables. By the way, getters and setters are declared public. Just an FYI, they're always declared public. So don't make them like anything else, private, protected, et cetera, et cetera. They're always declared public. I, sh I, I, don't re I didn't really think it was necessary to include in the definition, but they're always declared public. So. So this is our getter. I'm gonna keep the synonyms in parentheses. I'm not gonna call it that, but you you get the gist, right? College board will call it that. The only person who calls it in the world that. So if you ever see it on the exam, I don't want you to get confused because it just means a getter. So yeah, gotta get that five on the exam like always. So a getter, accessor. And what this is gonna do is that it's just gonna return whatever Ross Kate is. Because first, what we're gonna do is we're first gonna set the value. We're gonna change it. And then we're gonna retrieve that because that's what the get method does, right? Because the get method is gonna get the value of the instance variable while the setter is going to set it or change it. Or mutuate it, I should say. Mutuate just means to change. So we're done with our get method. Our get method has a return type of a string because that is what we defined in our instance variable. Okay? Now we have our setter. Our setter is void. It doesn't really return anything. Oh, this is going to take a parameter, my bad. Oh. 
why it's just turning into me. There we go. We're done with our getters and setters, right? And that's really just the demonstration of encapsulation. That is our getter, and this is our setter. Later in the video, we're going to talk about the main method and how we're going to print the getters and setters in there. But how it would really work is that you would print the set method, you would set a value for it because it takes in a string parameter, and then it's going to make the current object of this equal whatever we have passed in, right? And then after that, we're going to call the get method, which is just going to retrieve that value and return it to the terminal. So yeah, that's encapsulation. I'm going to demonstrate that how, how it will work in the main method when we do our coding demonstration on the computer. But yeah, that is our hands-on demonstration of encapsulation using getters and setters to retrieve and change an object. I mean, retrieve and retrieve to get and set the value an instance variables value through an object sorry for confusing you there it's been all it's been it's like nine in the morning already okay so in this video we're going to be achieving encapsulation so let's go ahead and go over our problem that we have to solve and let's go from there so we're given a task to achieve encapsulation using accessors and mutuators, which are just another word for getters and setters, so that they both print the names of the four Stranger Things boys, Mike, Dustin, Will, and Lucas. So, to achieve encapsulation, we have two steps. The first step is to sugarcoat our instance variables. This also formally means to encapsulate them, which means to declare them as private. The next step is to then utilize getters and setters that are declared public rather than private to get and set a value of the instance variable. So let's go over our terminology real quick before we actually start attacking the problem. Encapsulation is an OOP concept that utilizes an object that gets, accesses, and sets changes an instance variable which is sugarcoated or encapsulated, meaning its private access restricted. A getter will get or access a value of an instance variable, and a setter will set or mutuate a value of an instance variable. This means that it will change it and a getter will just access it. Okay, so if you actually do an FRQ on the AP exam or a competitive programming competition, you actually won't get this stuff. You'll just give it, you'll just get, be given the question. But I want to kind of show how you can attack an FRQ or a question like this. So that way you know. But you will not be given this on the FRQ. You'll have to know it yourself. So let's go ahead and start. How do we attack the problem? Well, the first step is that we have to sugarcoat or encapsulate our instance variable. What if I decided not to do that just randomly and I decided to just make this public? So our instance variables are just our variables declared in the class. So we have our class and we've declared a string. So we're going to make a public string and we're going to call it boy. Once we do this, what we could do is we can access this in a class, in another, in another class, because public means it's accessible among all packages. So what I could do is I could make my object Oops, my bad. Right? I can make an object, right? And then I can use e.boy. By the way, this is not encapsulation. I'm just showing what happens when you don't encapsulate the instance variable and you make it public. Um, this is not encapsulation at all. So e.boy, we make it equal to Dustin, right? And then we can just print we can just print e.boy, right? Right? And that actually runs, right? That's just going to straight up print Dustin. Let's bring our terminal. Let's drop it down. So that's just going to straight up print Dustin. But that's not really how we want to do encapsulation. Encapsulation, we should make this private. And what do we do when we make this private? Well, when we make this private, this means that this class will not be able to access whatever we've defined private over here. So that's why you'll see that boy is not visible. It's called a field, by the way. The AP exam will refer to this as a field. I call it an instance variable, same thing, field or instance variable. But really what the error is saying is that this is not accessible in any other class other than the one it's defined in. That's just what the word private means, right? So it's just saying that boy is private and it can't be accessed in any other class other than the one it's defined in. So, and we said that the first step to encapsulate is to make our instance variables private. So we're going to scratch this and instead 
If we want to print it from another class, we have to utilize getters and setters. Because this is declared private, we have to use getters and setters to change it or to print it or to set it. To change it or to get it. Not to set yeah. You kind of get the gist of it. So let's start from there. So by the way, getters and accesses are always declared public because they can be changed. Well, they can't really be changed, but they can be accessed in other classes or packages. So public string right because this is going to return a string because when we get something we're just going to simply return it right that's what a get method does it's just going to return it to us so we're going to say get boy it's not going to take in any parameters and we're just going to return boy right because when we get something it's just going to be sent to us so we're just going to straight up return boy right and then we're given a set boy right our set boy is our setter so this is going to be our getter. The synonym is accessor. And then this will be our setter, which is also known as a mutuator. And our mutuate our setter but or our mutuator, it's not going to actually have a return type because when we change something, we're not going to return that, right? We're going to change it and then we're going to use the get method to return it to us. So we're going to use a set we're going to use a set method and we're going to use a string and then um we're just gonna make a new name by the way by getters and setters these are just methods by the way i don't want to confuse you You're like what are these like they're just methods that get or set a value of an instance variable so we have a set boy and we have a string new name all we're doing in the set method is we're just changing the value of the instance variable we're not going to return anything that's why we're making it void a lot of set methods are always void because they're Set methods are usually void because they're not going to return anything to you. They're just going to change it, right? So to do this, all we just have to do is we have to say this dot boy equals a new boy. The this keyword is just referring to the current object in a constructor or a method. So it's referring to the current object. So that's going to be this. So once we have that, we are good to go. So we have our, and then we can go back to our main method, which is our code that runs, and we can say e dot set boy, and we can make this Mike, and then we can print to the terminal our get method because our get because once this is changed. The get method is then just going to simply return that, right? So once we have changed our value here, our get method is just going to return that change value to us. And that's going to print Mike. And see, that works. Because although our instance variable is declared private, we've used public getters and setters to change and access it. And then we can repeat the same thing for all the other three, for the other three boys. Dustin, Will, and Lucas. And there we go, Mike, Dustin, Will, and Lucas, and our output matches that. And that's how we achieve encapsulation. First, we make instance variables that are private, and then second, we make public getters and setters that will change and get the value of the instance variable or the field. So that's really encapsulation. If there are any doubts that happened during this video, be sure to give me some, be sure to ask questions in the comments down below. I'll definitely answer them. And be sure to give a like and subscribe if you did enjoy the video, and I'll see you guys next time.